So good evening, students. Um, you should have got your packets by now. Probably some of them, some of them won't come until tomorrow. But um, and uh, for this class, our first story for um, this week is an excerpt from Frankenstein, which is the part where the the monster is pleading with the doctor to um, save him. He has uh, made quite a mess of things. He's been on the loose and he, um, people are terrified of him. And uh, in their terror, they either run away from him, which he doesn't understand, or they run at him and try to kill him, which he completely understands and defends himself. And because he is a monster, he has, you know, he has superhuman strength and um, he's able to do terrible things. So, you know, unlike a typical guy out in the neighborhood beating up on people, he's ripping people limb from limb and tearing them apart. And um, he's made a real mess in the neighborhood. And they have driven him to the top of the mountain or to the, you know, um, the glaciers, he calls it. It's you know, up cold up there, and he is living up there, trying to stay away from people as much as he can. He is self-distance, so social distancing. Um, one of the things you have to get over in this book is that Frankenstein is the doctor. The monster does not have a name, and uh, he's only called the monster in the book, at, or the creation, or the um the project that that dr frankenstein is working on victor frankenstein is the doctor and so we have gotten into the habit as americans and as night 21st century folk that we um have we call the monster frankenstein with the green skin and the square head and the bolts coming out of his neck kind of thing which um if when you if you were to read this book, it's not a very long book. You might be something you might like to read. Um, it uh, has descriptions of what is a little more like a um, very big sewing project where Dr. Frankenstein sewed this person together from other people, and it um, doesn't is not pretty. But anyway, so um, I'm going to uh, talk about this and talk about the story, and uh, hopefully that'll help you do your questions. Um, the way this is set up, I hope is going to work where we read the story on Mondays. On Tuesday, um, I have a video come out where I read the story and I go over the questions. Um, if you want to do the questions right after you read the story and then not do any English on Tuesdays, that's okay. You can paste this yourself, your high schoolers. You're going to have to figure out how to pace yourself um, when you take any kinds of classes or training outside of, of high school. So um, this is a good practice for that. And that is that, um, you know, if you want to do it all in one day and be done with English for the rest of the week, that's okay too. So, um, so on the back of your story, you have some questions. They are, um, these are all multiple choice it doesn't look to me like you have any short answer. You just go right to the discussion question. So um, part A of this question is, what is the meaning of dissoluble as it is used in paragraph three of the passage? Um, if you go back to paragraph three and you read, there's paragraph one, here's paragraph two, um, where he says, Um, that thy creature to whom thou art bound by ties only dissoluble by the annihilation of one of us. So, what is the meaning of that word? A, obtainable. B, impossible. C, reasonable. Or D, breakable. Now, part B of this question is which phrase in paragraph three supports the answer? And A is miserable about beyond all living things. B, detest and spurn me. 
C, bound by ties, and D, comply with my conditions. So that gives you um, some ideas of uh, where what else might support your answer for that. Part A, what is the meaning of recompense as it is used in paragraph eight of this passage? And so if you read paragraph eight, Yet it is in your power to recompense me and deliver them from an evil which is only remains for you to make so great that not only you and your family but thousands of others shall be swallowed up in the whirlwinds of its rage. So do you think that means A, make amends to, B, pay tribute to, C, bring shame on, or D, show understanding of? And part four, part B, number four, which phrase from paragraph eight supports that answer? A, I will keep no terms with my enemies. B, let your compassion be moved. C, they shall spare my wretchedness. Or D, I ask you not to spare me. All right, number five, part A, what primary tone is established by the words Dr. Frankenstein's creature uses? A, emotionally distress, B, stern disapproval, C, taunting mockery, or D, callous indifference. Part B, one of the following seven phrases from the passage select three that convey the tone identified in part A. A, detest and spurn me. B, if you will comply with my condition. C, I will defend it. D, whom thou drivest from joy. How can I move thee? E, F, caves of ice. And G, the sun is yet high in the heavens. So remember, if you chose, if you chose, say you chose um, stern disapproval of part A, you need to find three of these phrases that support that. So this is an important regents lesson in that everything that you say, you need to find support for that. You can't just, you know, you can't just willy nilly say that it was this, although I know some of you want to, but you can't, you have to be able to support it. So where do you find that support in the text? And again, the regents really doesn't want to know what you know. They want to know if you can, if you can communicate what you know. And you can only know what was in the text. <laughs> so you're just going to have to figure out how to find the, the evidence and bring it to you. Number seven, part A, how does the interaction between the characters, which it's just the creature and the doctor in this case, advance the plot in the passage? A, the emotions each character displays creates an opportunity for a flashback to show the reason Dr. Frankenstein created the man. B, the verbal dispute between the characters gives the man the opportunity to explain his experiences to Dr. Frankenstein. C, the fear expressed by the characters establishes the reasons for their conflicts. And D, the threats each makes against the other initiate rising action. All right, so if you have to pick one of those, now you have to decide which phrase from the passage supports the answer. A, I perceived as the shape came nearer, sight tremendous and abhorred that it was the wretch whom I had created. B, be gone or let us try our strength in a fight for which one must fall. C, the sun is yet high in the heavens before it descends to hide itself behind your snowy precipices, precipices and illuminate another world. You will have heard my story and can decide. D, become the scourge of your fellow creatures and author of your own speedy ruin.
<clears throat> Part A, which interaction is most like the one between Dr. Frankenstein and his creature? A, a parent tries to reason with a child who continues to disobey him. B, a judge dismisses someone who continues to make a plea. C, a detective questions a suspect who offers only evasive answers. At D, a person trusts someone who goes on to betray him repeatedly. So, once you decide which character couple you think that these two are, part B, which two phrases or sentences support the answer to part A? A, I was troubled. B, he approached his countenance, bespoke bitter anguish combined with disdain and malignity. D, C, I expected this reception. D, I entreat you to hear me. E, O, oh, praise the eternal justice of man. And F, be gone, relieve me from the sight of your detested form. All right, so that concludes those questions. Now, your Wednesday project is the discussion questions on the back. There are four of them, and you only have to pick one. Pick one to write about. But because you're only picking one, I want you to be sure to be able to explain it fully. I'm not looking for one word answers. I'm not looking for even one sentence answers. Many of these have two questions in them and therefore should at least have two questions, two answers, but also they should be, you have to explain where you got that information. All of this is good practice for when it comes time to take the test and you have to be able to explain why you think what you think. So number one is why do you think humans have rejected the creature? How have his interactions with humans corrupted his originally kind character? So like we talked about, he uh, was created, he got woke up, and he was a nice person. Um, and he thought everybody else would be nice too. But he's a monster and he doesn't look normal and he doesn't act normal and he doesn't do things the way we do things and he doesn't know his own strength and break stuff. And people get funny about that. And... <sighs> You know, President Obama had a great quote where he said, no little babies in this world are born racist. They are taught to be that. And that somewhere in our, in our life experience, we come across people who make us think about people the way we think about people. And it's kind of true of Frankenstein, of, of, the, of the monster. You know, he, when he was woke up, his, his, his intentions were pure. His ideas were very primitive and he didn't know any better other than to do what he felt he should be doing. And then people come along and they uh, perhaps make him feel a little differently about things. And he gets into defending himself and... Um, and in that way, he becomes corrupted. In the context of the text, how does this excerpt from Frankenstein explore the limits of what humans can and should create? What should humans avoid attempting to control or create? Cite examples from the text, your own experience, or other places. Maybe you've, you know, read a book about Jurassic Park is a great example. Should we should we recreate dinosaurs even if we found their DNA and were able to, you know, mix it together like they did? And should we, um, you know, uh, should we create, um, you know, babies that are, you know, certain color hair, certain color eyes, certain color skin? Um, should we? Um, should we mess with mother nature? I don't know. You know, these, those are, are good questions. And, 
you know, Dr. Frankenstein thought he was doing a great thing and it kind of backfired on him. Um, there's lots of great examples in of books and movies that have been made about this idea of creating something that might end up being a bad thing. Um, one of Albert Einstein's greatest regrets was that he created what... Okay, so what I was saying was that one of Albert Einstein's greatest regrets was that he built all of the material that was needed for the atomic bomb. And that was something that he wished he hadn't done, that he hadn't created that, and that that created such a giant mess when we used the atomic bomb in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So there you go. Number three, did Frankenstein overstep certain ethical boundaries as a scientist? Why or why not? Can you think of any real world examples where scientists take part in questionable research or experiments? Cite examples from your test, from your text, your own experience or other pieces of literature, art, or history in your answer. This kind of goes along with number two. So either one of those is um, very similar in the case. Um, number two is really about what should we or shouldn't we do? And then number three is about what have we done that we perhaps shouldn't have done? Number four, why does Frankenstein's creature feel lonely? How has mankind contributed to the creature's feelings of loneliness? Have you ever felt lonely like the creature? Cite examples from the text, your own experience or other literature, art or history as your example. Um, I think that something that our humanness brings to us is that we want to be like everybody else. And we often are not like everybody else. And uh, that's often what makes us be mo most beautiful and most amazing and unique. And um, however, it is also what other humans pick out as something to ostracize us for or pick on us for or cast us out for. And uh, there's lots of examples of where people have been different and have been ridiculed and made fun of and bullied because they were different. And therefore they were lonely. Um, and I think all of you have probably had experiences where you have felt different than everybody else and you desperately wanted to hide that difference and uh, you definitely desperately wanted to be like everybody else. I want to have shoes like everybody else. I want to have the clothes like everybody else. I have to have just the right jeans. I have to have just the right shirt. Um, and or then there are the people who are very comfortable being different and are very good at um, adapting to the loneliness of being different. Um, so there are lots of stories about this and it would be great to hear some of them and it would be great to have some of your um, experiences of what mankind does to people who choose to stand out and who are, in the case of the monster, he had no choice but to stand out and he was made that way. Um, like Lady Gaga says, I was made this way and I'm not like everybody else and I can't help it. And all of her life, people pushed her away um, because she was different. So um, this is a, um, that was, a, is one example of where someone who was different and desperately wanted to be part of the group now has become a leader of a group and um, has made it cool to be different and uh, that's an awesome thing when you can turn something that was meant to be bad into something that was good. The monster, in this case, I don't know that there's time for him to become the next Lady Gaga. But, um, you know, had this been the 80s, maybe things would be different. <laughs> anyway, um, so your after you finish your one discussion question, that would be Wednesday's project, 
Thursday, I'm looking for you to write a literary text analysis where you talk about what is the central idea? What is Dr. Frankenstein trying to tell us? And how can we, what literary develop, device does he use to get that idea across? If you need anything, write your questions or your comments in the, um, in the comment section for this video, or you can um, contact me through email, or um, you can also, uh, there's, you know, there's probably going to be a way where we can um, FaceTime or we can call one another. And uh, so hopefully that will evolve here. Um, we just learned how to do this. Now we'll learn how to do that. So um, otherwise have a great night and, um, you know, don't forget about your TED Talk or a podcast or a mad quote for Friday. So thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye.